Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be doing a tropical birthday card. I am, I showed you Seabreeze, but I didn't end up using it. Um, I did use the Paradise Blooms and the Slimline Sentiments. It's the eyelet one. And while I'm not making a Slimline card, I am using the word dies that come in that set. Um, we're going to be doing some more Distress Ink smushing. I actually made this card before I made the other, the last video that you saw with it. Um, and this one has a little bit of Copic shading, but not as much as the other one. So if you're interested in more color, I will link that below if you're watching on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm sorry, I'll link it at the end. Here, basically, I've just, this is my background. I've smushed down three different blue colors, and then I added quite a bit of water to get a wash. It was a little bit too much water, um, and so I'm just going to start over again. Like, not with the paper. The paper is fine, but I mean with my color base. Um, so you sometimes just have to play with this a little bit to kind of get the look that you're going for. I like that it was a little bit lighter in the beginning and it gave me a really good full wash of my background um, for just information purposes in case you're trying to figure out what I'm using. Um, I'm using the Canson Aquel uh, Montival watercolor paper. It's the one I always use. Um, and so I've just done a the same thing. I've just done less water this time around. And then I'm going to dry this as I go. I'm going to dip it back in as many times as I would like, add more color as many times as I would like. Um, this is a very forgiving technique. So you can make it as washy or as textured as you would like. Um, so it's really something that you can just kind of play with until you're happy with what you have. I decided to keep the more washy part on the top of the card and then pick up more texture at the base of the card. Um, my watercolor paper I buy in the 9 by 12 packs. So when I cut them down into fours, it is four and a half by six. So I already know that I'm going to trim some of this off. Um, so it'll just depend on what kind of look I'm going for when I'm putting everything together, which portion I cut off. And actually, I think I ended up keeping the more textured side on this one. Um, and like like I said, just I'm putting it back in there as many times as I want. You guys know that I'm a big fan of kind of getting the most bang for my buck. And so on the next one, um, well, I'm going to do the perfect pearls first because honestly, it's a Kelly background. It has to have some shimmers on it. Um, I use perfect pearls and the color perfect pearl often, but there are other options out there and I've used other options in the past. You could use a metallic watercolor to achieve this look. You could use um, other pigment powders that are on the market. You could use, um, yeah, that's, I mean, there's a lot there. I, well, I suppose you could try to do it with a glitter pen, but I don't know how well it would flick. You'd have to really get a lot because it's the same thing as a water pen, like the shape of them. Um, but I just find this to be the easiest. I have never really had to replace. I lost it once, so I had to buy a new one, but I've never actually run out of Perfect Pearls and I use it pretty frequently. So once this background is done, I'm going to set it aside to dry and then I'm going to move on to the next one. I have sped this up a little bit. Um, this is for my leaves and I am going to do a full panel for my leaves um, because I have so many to cut out and they are so large in this set. There's like a Monstera, there's a Palm, um, and then there's another, I'm not a, um, is it a botanist? Are those the plant people? So I'm not sure what exactly it's called. Here I started off with a little less water and I was having a hard time getting good coverage. And then so as I go, you'll see that I'm going to add more water to the background um, or to my craft mat so that I can get a more solid background. And then I'll go back in and add the texture. I like... Um, Usually when I'm doing this, I'm not looking for a lot of white spots. I'm looking for a lot of color variation. I'm looking for a lot of texture. I'm not looking for a ton of white areas. Um, so if you're like me in that aspect, you might want to start with a super kind of watery um, first go round, dry it, and then do it again. And you could make as like I, you see me wiping them up, um, but you could continue to make as many backgrounds as you would like. Um, you don't have to wipe it up. That ink is still good. Um, my friend Dawn actually did this with Distress Sprays, I think. And I was like, what? 
but why do I need the sprays, girl? Like, I got the inks. And so she said that the sprays are actually more concentrated color. Um, and it's almost like kind of doing the same thing, but with re-inkers. So I don't own any of, the, any of the sprays. I haven't tried that, but I would be very interested to see. So I might pick one up in like a color I would use, for, you know, maybe like a blue, <laughs> a color I would use frequently just to see if that's, um, if I would use them at all before I invested any money in them, um, you know, on a larger scale. But, oh, that was the other thing for the glitters. People have iridescent sprays. Um, I have a, I think there used to be one maybe from Nuvo that I might have somewhere, but the Perfect Pearls work for me. Anywho, back to the card. So once that's done, I'm then going to, for this one, this is gonna be the one for all of my flowers. I am gonna use a full panel, but I am not making all of my colors the same, um, or all of my flowers the same color. So I am kind of doing this in almost like quadrants. Um, I'm like sectioning them off. So I'm I, this one I started with, um, the mustard seed, the carved pumpkin, and the kitsch flamingo. The kitsch flamingo is just not strong enough to stand up next to those other two colors. It was getting totally washed out. So I did go back in with picked raspberry, which is a little bit brighter. Um, and then for my middle section, I'm going to do some pinks and purples. And then for the very last section, I'm going to do some darker purples so that I can stamp all of my flowers on one sheet of cardstock and not have all of these little like scrappy pieces parts. If you find that you have a hard time keeping your colors contained, um, all of mine played really nice together. So I started with the orange and yellow on one side, the pinks in the middle is kind of a buffer, and then the purple on the other end so that my purple and my yellow aren't, there's no chance they're mixing. Um, and I use that pink as like a buffer color. But if you have a hard time doing that, you can cut them apart. I just don't want all the little um, the little scrap pieces that I'm never going to use for anything laying around. So um, yeah, so we are at the end of our vacation week. Um, we are heading into like a normal regular work week. Today is Saturday and we have done things with the kids almost every day this week. So we've made some wonderful memories and mom and dad are very tired. It's very tiring. You guys know if you have children, um, it's not like it's not really a vacation for you if you're on vacation and uh, you're trying to entertain your children. It's just really not. Not until they get a little bit older. Um, so we've done a bunch of different things. Uh, and then today we are actually getting to go on a date, just he and I, just by ourselves. We're abandoning our children to our, um, well, to my mother-in-law, Eric's mother. She generously is donating her time this evening to hang out with her grandkids. Um, here for the purples, I'm using the picked raspberry, the wilted violet, which has always been my favorite purple. Um, and then this villainous potion, which came out, it's one of the newer distress colors. It came out a while ago, but I just recently got it. Um, super excited to use that for fall. Super, super pretty color. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're going to go on a date tonight and, um, yeah, I'm excited. It's been a long time. I think it's been since May, since he, we've gone out with just the two of us. Um, so our game plan is they have a, uh, it, it's called the square, um, but it's a square where you can kind of walk around. There's like old, I shouldn't say old, but there's like shops. It's kind of set up old timey. Like there's a bunch of shops in the square, um, restaurants, ice cream. And so we're going to go do that just so we can kind of park and then walk around. Um, that's actually where we got engaged at. There's a big gazebo and park in the center of the square. Um, and we got engaged at that gazebo. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. There's a couple of restaurants out there. We haven't made a choice about which one we're going to yet. Uh, obviously we'll get ice cream, but then they also have a place, um, to paint ceramics. So if you remember on our last date night, um, we went to, we went to downtown because that's sort of my husband's vibe. Um, we went to like a craft brewery. Um, there was the weird bathroom <laughs> situation. And then we went to a concert. Um, so not that I, I love concerts. I love all kinds of music, but like the rest of the night was kind of his, his kind of vibe because I planned it. So tonight we're kind of going to do something that's more of my kind of thing, which I feel like is a good compromise. Um, and plus like the 
ceramics are my mom used to paint ceramics when I was a kid like that was her kind of um creative hobby that she did which is funny because my mom will tell you that she's not creative but her ceramics were beautiful she used to paint like we had a Mr. and Mrs. Claus that she had painted we like kids like I had a unicorn that she painted a bear I used to collect bears when I was little little um that was the theme of my nursery actually which was done in green which is strange probably because I thought I was going to be a boy because like my mother does not like green at all at all um so but anywho so she used to do that I am familiar with it I've done it a couple of times it's fun but you don't have to pick um you know you don't have to pick like unicorns or piggy banks or whatever like they have dishes you can paint so here everything is stamped out on each of their um papers these are all three of the watercolor pieces that we've done and I'm not going to cover this up um I'm just going to accent what I need to uh with the coloring what do I mean by accent what I need to I mean I'm just going to add some shading that's it I'm only using two colors for the majority of this. I am leaving the watercolor portion, the ink smushing, as my lightest color. I'm really just kind of adding a little bit of um, shadow to give them some dimension and some depth. Uh, but I'm not adding too much. I'm not covering it up. If you remember the, the previous video, I did. I colored right over top of it and I just used it as kind of like an underlay. Where here I'm using it as a highlight. So there's a couple of different ways to use this technique. It just depends on the kind of look that you are going for. I did this a super long time ago. And actually I think that one was with Tropical Flowers too. Um, but I did this a really long time ago and I used colored pencils instead of Copics um, to add in my shadows and kind of get a really good color variation. Um, so I picked some yellow greens. That's what I've done here already. And now I'm going to move on to some blue greens for my palms and for this monstera so i'm going i think i've told you guys this before um i'm growing a monstera downstairs in my house and you think that like i did a little bit of research because i know that i'm a plant murderer okay i've even killed succulents people like i kill plants uh i don't mean to i think they're beautiful but they're just not i guess as high up on my agenda as they need to be to stay alive i unalive them i can't help it um, so when I was looking to get a house plant, um, I was looking for one that wasn't going to need a ton of care. Like it was pretty chill on its own. And so I came up with the Monstera, which is a good, uh, size plant. I wanted it, um, for my house, but I also wanted it for staging my photos back when we were doing furniture. That ship has sailed, uh, at least until Caitlin's a little bit older. But anyway, um... So I've been growing this Monstera and it's been getting like decent size, but I'm like, what is going on with this plant that like it's not getting bigger? Here is what happened. I apparently did minimal research, like just a smidge, just enough for me to purchase this thing and nothing else because they are climbing plants. I didn't know that. Monsteras literally cannot support themselves. The weight of their leaves are so heavy that the stems cannot support it, which is why like when you see them growing wild in tropical areas, they are typically entwined with other trees because they need them for the support. I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't do my due diligence. So now we have bought a, um, it's like a steak. It's a green steak. I wanted one of the mossy steaks, but they didn't have them. So Eric picked me up this green steak at Home Depot and now I've wired it up. Um, and the, I got to tell you, the thing already looks perkier. It already looks happier, probably because it's not having to lay on top of itself and support its own weight anymore. Um, so anywho, the coloring of the Monstera, I kind of picked based on the one that I have downstairs in my house. So moving on to the flowers now that the leaves are done. Um, my hibiscus is more in the orange range, so that is why I opted to go with those. You will also notice in the coloring that I'm doing something a little bit different than I normally do. Normally, I start with my lightest and go out to my darkest and then darkest back into my lightest. Um, this time, I'm starting with my darkest. And the reason is, is because I'm adding so little shading. 
I'm just, I'm going in with my darkest and I'm hitting the areas that are kind of already there um, based on what the illustrator has drawn. And then any areas where I know shading should be, where two points meet, where one object lays on top of one another. And then I'm just using that second color to go back in and blend out my first one. Um, I'm not covering the whole petal, so I don't need a lot of saturation just enough that it blends in and makes sense with what I have already there. I am going to use the yellow greens to do the stems of all of these because it's going to play nicer with the colors that I chose. Um, that bit of yellow instead of blue is going to keep it green instead of making it muddy. Um, so anyway, what were we talking about? We had a lot of things we were talking about. Um, no. I've lost it now. Date night. And then, oh, the ceramics. That's how, that's how, oh man, that was a windy road, guys. We really got crazy. Um, so yeah, we're going to go, we're going to try the ceramics. It's been, um, it's been a little while since I have been. My goddaughter actually had a, if you remember, I probably told you, um, had a party at one of the ones that's more inclined towards littler kids. Um, and she, that was her birthday party. And so you, as you pay for the party, it includes like this wall of items that the kids can choose from. Um, and Nathan, he just wanted to paint a ceramic N for his bedroom. Uh, but anyway, um, so this one's a little bit different. It has a, a, a lot more options. Um, so we could, you know, do like a plate or a mug or like a sugar bowl. We could do, um, you know, something for one of the kids. You can do, you know, just there. there's a, a ton of different options. So we'll see what they've got when we get there. And then they, um, they fire it and everything for you. You just have to go back like a week later and pick it up. Um, so that'll be a fun way to spend our evening. A not so fun thing that is coming up and several of you guys have asked, which I do appreciate, but I didn't really have any information to give you, um, is Molly surgery. So I told you guys uh, quite some months ago that Molly has torn her ACL and her left leg completely and that her right one also has some damage to it and that we were kind of just trying to decide whether or not we were going to have the surgery. We did decide to go ahead and have the surgery um, because if you remember from my previous video, her blood work looked good, all of her x-ray scans, everything looked good. They said that other than this ACL tear, she appears to be a very healthy dog even though she is 11. Um, so we are we're going to go ahead and do it. God help us. Um, I'm very, you guys know I suffer from anxiety. I am very apprehensive um, about taking her for it and I am apprehensive about her recovery from it. Um, the, I'm just, it is what it is. I know this about myself. Back to the card real quick. So for the purple ones, you saw me shade with a V09 and then a V04. For this one that's on the border, which so it's like more of a pinky purple, I'm actually going to use the V04 as my darkest color and then shade it with an RV02. For the pink one, for the calla lily, you guys did see me bring in three colors. That's why I said mostly two. My goal was two, but that RV04 just needed a little bit of help blending out into the highlight. And so I had to bring in the RV02. You guys do what you need to do to be happy with what your, what your card is going to look like. I am going to outline all of my images and then I'm going to die cut them out. This is an unnecessary step as far as the outlining, but I do like a bold black outline. I'm going to show you this whole flower just so you can see the difference because it's the same exact flower um, and the same exact colors. So that is why I do it. You'll be able to see it here in just a second. Um, but then we're going to die cut. We're going to start building the card. So uh, we did decide to go ahead and get her surgery done. Originally, her surgery was supposed to be um, July 5th. That was the original date. But if you remember, we had just brought home Caitlin from the hospital. And so we felt like with her care, um, we would be kind of overwhelmed with having to take care of Caitlin with her um, RSV and then take care of Molly with her ACL surgery. So we called the vet to see if we could push it back by a week or so. And the next opening that they had available, <clears throat> sorry, was August 1st. And so that is how we ended up with this particular one. So 
I am home. You guys know this, you know, I'm, I'm working from home. And so I am going to be her main caregiver, uh, which is no problem whatsoever, except for the fact that Molly weighs 66 pounds. And that is Oh, more? That is, no, that is half my body weight. That is half my body weight. So here I've kind of built up the card over on the left-hand side to pick out my sentiment. Instead of using the um, paradise, the sea breeze one, which is what I showed you, I decided to make it a birthday card and I used the big buzzwords. Um, they have stamps and dies. I just use the stamps um, to, to use the happy uh, die cut from the Slimline Sentiments Eyelet set and then birthday wishes underneath it. And I'm just going to be heat embossing that in black before um, I die cut out the happy. I die cut it out of black and then a couple out of white just so it would be able to stand up um, because they are a thinner sentiment. Um, so yeah, so I have picked her up. She doesn't like the cone. She's not a fan of the cone. Um, and so I've picked her up an inflatable collar, which the vet would said would be fine for her. She doesn't like when she, I, I mean, obviously she, it's hard to get access to her food when she has the big cone on. She can't see. Um, so we're going to try the inflatable cone and hopefully that works better for her. And then the other thing I got, because I am going to have trouble lifting her, is I got a, it's, it's like a lift for their back legs. So it's like a wrap that you put around them and then that way you can lift up their back legs. We, my, my dad, um, brought over, which was very kind of him, brought over, uh, Graham used to have a wheelchair ramp, um, for when they had to take her to doctor's appointments. And so they still had that in their storage shed. They brought it over because on our deck, there is stairs to get down to the grass that Molly pro probably will not be able to do right away. Um, so Eric is going to put that up. So Monday, Eric's going to go to work like normal. I'm going to take her in for her appointment. They will do the assessment and then they will do the surgery the same day. I will be able to bring her home that night around 6.30, 7 o'clock. So she'll be there for almost 12 hours. Um, so we'll be able to bring her home that night. By that time, Eric will be home from work, um, you know, to help me get her in and out of the car and stuff. And then Tuesday, he's going to go into work later just so we can kind of figure out what works for us as far as being able to get her in and out of the house to go to the bathroom. She does have a crate, which we almost never use for her anymore uh, because she doesn't need to be crated. She doesn't get into anything. Um Back to the card. So here you guys know Tombow Mono Multi Glue is repositional when it dries. I use this quite a bit um, to hold my flowers or leaves in place when I'm building bouquets so I can lay them and adjust them easily, but um, they aren't stuck down permanently and I'm also not having to chase them all over. So that is what is going on here. Once I get it built, I will go back through with the um, honeybee uh glue and then adhere all of them down. I did adhere them flat just because there's so many layered on top of each other. It already has a ton of dimension. It didn't need any foam tape, y'all, believe me. So, um, <clears throat> so when I take her in for her surgery, I do have to bring her medications in. She has an anti-inflammatory as well as a pain med just so they can see how often we're using those. Um, so that they can, you know, refill them if we need them. That's kind of how we've been making it through uh, to this point. So yeah, hopefully everything goes really well. You know, it has a um, six to eight week recovery time. I was trying to make sure that we could get it done before like winter hit. Um, not that I want her to be laid up all summer long, but obviously with us having to get her in and outside, it does make it easier if it's nicer out. We will be um, putting her in her crate, um, you know, with some pillows and blankies and stuff to try to make her as comfortable as possible. Um, she doesn't, she doesn't mind the crate. I think probably because um, it's always kind of been a her choice thing. She didn't have to be in there and she still doesn't have to be in there, but she's not going to be able to jump up on the couch and any dog bed that we bring home, Emma eats. <laughs> Real talk. That's just, even though Emma is... Well, she, what is she, three now? She's still very much a puppy and she still gets into trouble all the time. Um, my mom had bought Nathan a puppy dog um, 
this quite a while back. It was like a stuffed puppy dog. And then um, somebody on Eric's side of the family uh, actually bought Caitlin the same puppy dog. So Nathan brought his puppy dog down to show uh, Grandma T, hey, look, I have the same one. And they were sitting on the end table. And like at six o'clock in the morning, one morning, I got up to give, because Caitlin was crying and she had lost her pacifier. Um, so I got up to give her a pacifier. And then I see Emma laying on the landing with this bear. And thankfully, she has just chewed um, the tag off at this point. But I'm like, what are you doing? So I pick it up. I put it on the kitchen table. I go about my business. I go back to bed. Two days later, I am, what a what was I doing? I think I was in the craft room and I come downstairs and she's got the other bear. She has the other bear. Yeah, she does. Chewing off the tag again. I'm like, what? I don't understand. What is the matter with you? Um, so anyway, at this point, the card's mostly built. I did end up, um, and this was off screen, I did end up sliding some foam underneath that birthday wishes. I just wasn't happy with how it was sitting um, just to make it more stable. I'm going to trim off the stems off the bottom. At this point, I'm pretty happy with the way the card's looking, but you know that I cannot leave it with no shimmers. Um, so these are the Ocean Waves Pearl Stickers uh, from the latest Honey Bee release. Super pretty colors. I opted to go with the lighter blue ones to kind of match that background um, and just, you know, put those in there to kind of accent my um, sentiment, which I was really very happy with. Uh, even though those two sets don't necessarily... Um, like they aren't necessarily meant to be used together. I think they go together pretty well. I'm going to add the shimmers to the flowers and I apologize. This was before I said I would shake it around. So you're probably not going to see the shimmer on this one. And then I did go back in and add some white highlights to the flowers as well as some dots to the stamen for the hibiscus. Um, just to kind of brighten those up a little bit. They got a little bit dark with the coloring and the stamping. So, yeah, I mean, we just, we, we've had a lot going on this week. I'll tell you those stories in the upcoming videos, um, but excited for date night, less excited for Molly's surgery, even though I want her to feel better. Um, I'm a scared. It's just how I roll. So that's it. That's the whole card. I appreciate you guys spending your time with me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.